Today, we're going to find the area of a parallelogram bounded by the x-axis, the line g of x is equal to 2, the line f of x is equal to 3x, and the line parallel to f of x passing through 6, 1. All right, so uh, let's get into it. Um, so I already took the liberty of kind of drawing it out for us. I will walk you through it though quickly. So the first thing is um, the graph of the g of x is equal to 2 is right here in red. Um, it is a, simply a horizontal line. All right, this is like saying y is equal to 2. Right, so everywhere along this particular line, the y value is 2. The next thing that was graphed was going to be the uh, 3x function. Right, the f of x is equal to 3x. Now that just tells us the slope is 3. In other words, 3 over 1. So remember, slope is change in y over change in x. So you go up 3 and over to the right 1. All right, and where do we start from? Well, there is no b term here, so therefore we start at the origin. All right, so if you go up 3 over 1, Boom, there you are. Up three, over one, boom, there you are. All right? So that's that. Um, the next one then is uh, the, oh, by the, I skipped over x-axis, right? But that's pretty simple. Well, there's the x-axis. And then the last one's a little harder to kind of understand how to arrive at it. Uh, but uh, here's now the line that's parallel. I just call it h of x. It doesn't matter. You can call it, you know, anything you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. You know what I mean? Okay. So um, all we need to do now is uh, we just have to figure out how we came up with this particular function, right? So it told us that this line here in purple is going to be parallel, which it looks pretty darn parallel. Um, and uh, it's going to pass through the point uh, 6, 1. So 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, go up 1. So it looks like it passes right here, right? So how did I find, though, this line? Well, all I had to do was simply uh, take, I know that they're parallel, right? So the slope should be equal, right? So what I did was I said, well, h of x then should equal 3x plus something. I don't know what the something is. They then gave me the coordinates of a point it passes through. So they told me the y value here, essentially the h of x value is 1, so I plugged in 1. The x value here is 6, so I plugged in 6 then for x. And then I solve this for b, right? This works out to be 18. You minus the 18 for both sides. That's 81. So I don't really know what that was. But you would then get a negative 17, and that's equal to b. That's exactly how I came up with this. There's my b value, all right? Now, since the point of this video is not really to do that, but to, I just still want to explain it to you, that's why I'm running through it. If you need more help with trying to figure out how I came up with that, please see our uh, function playlist, all right? We have a whole, uh, I don't even know how many we have, Hundreds of videos maybe on it. I'm not really sure. Uh, but we got a lot. Anyway, getting back to the problem now. Oh, no, don't move it. One second. It was perfect. I'm trying to get this. There we go. A little black dot off of it. All right. So um, what we need to do is uh, we need to now find the area of this particular bounded figure. I'm going to outline in green. Okay. All right. Hopefully you're having a good semester. Okay, so how do we find the area of this, right? So we have to know the equation uh, for area of a parallelogram, and it's very, very simple. Area of a parallelogram, maybe I'll write it over here. Area of a parallelogram will simply be equal to the base length multiplied by the height length, okay? So in other words, if I had to now, let's say, highlight the base here in this parallelogram, this would represent the base, okay? That total length. And then what would represent the height now? Well, the height would be represented as perpendicular to it. All right? The height of that parallelogram is that particular line I just drew. All right? So what I need to do is I have to basically find the length of the base and then also find that height. And if I can do that, then I'm good to go. All right? So why don't we do this first? Why don't we find now the um, length here of the base? So I notice that it starts at the origin. So I know this x value here is 0, but what I really want to find is I want to find the x value here, okay? If I know the x value of this point, let's say it's 0, well, not let's say it is 0 because this one intersected the, um, this line here intersects the origin, so I know the bounded region over here is 0 for x, so I'll write x is equal to 0, and then I want to find the x value here. Now, visually, it looks like it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a little less than six, maybe six and three quarters, uh, a little less than six, so maybe five and three quarters, right? Did I do two, three, four, five? Yeah, five and three quarters or so, all right? Uh, like 5.75, but we'll see what it winds up working out to be. So that's my goal. I want to find now where this uh, purple, what color is it, purple? Where this purple graph uh, intersects that x-axis. So how do I do that? Well, I know one thing about this point. I know the y value. The y value is zero. 
right? So the coordinates here of this particular point on the x-axis, and let me just move this word a little bit. So the coordinates here are going to be x, who knows what that is, comma zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my function here, okay, in purple. h of x is equal to 3x minus 17. So I know the y value, remember, this h of x you can just interpret as y, so it's going to be 0 is equal to 3x minus 17. So once you plug in the y value of 0, this function will spit out the x value that correlates with this y value. In other words, it will spit out the coordinates, the x coordinate specifically of that point. So just solve this now for x, right? Minus the 3, it doesn't matter how you do it, but minus the 3x, as long as you do it right, of course and then divide it by th negative three on both sides. All right, so I'm gonna find a nice little decimal for this. It's probably gonna be repeating, but wow, would you look at that, right? It's gonna be positive 5.6 repeating, or five and two thirds, but isn't that what I kind of estimated? I said five and three quarters, right, 0.75. So I know I'm on the right track here. All right, so that's the x value. Now, if the x started at zero and then it went to 5.6, Six, seven. What's the total length then of this segment? Well, it's simply going to be this value, 5.67 minus the zero. Obviously, it's just 5.67. So we just found the uh, value of the base. So now the area is going to be equal to the 5 and 2 thirds, or about 5.67. When I do the calculation, I'm going to be using exact values. Now my goal here is to find the height. So how in the world do I now find the height of this thing? Well, I notice that the height is simply just the same Right, let me do it like this. Let me, because otherwise, I'll, let me do it like this. This particular height is the same all across, right? But I notice it's also the same as, ooh, this, this looks like it might be helpful, right? This looks a little helpful, or maybe even here looks a little more helpful, right? Or even here looks very helpful. I know now that if I can just find the coordinates, the y coordinates specifically, of that point, right here, then I can find the height because I know that the y coordinate that this line is starting on is zero, right? The y coordinate. So now let me just, oh, well, let me just now write this y is equal to zero down here. And the question is now, well, what is the y value up here? All right. So I got to figure that out. That's my goal. Once I figure that out, I know what the height is. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to take a look at what two graphs are intersecting at that point, And I'm going to set them equal to one another. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to now, I realize it's the red and the blue. So I have to set those two graph, uh, those two functions equal to one another. Now when we, and why is that happening? Well, because the coordinates of the points are equal between those two because they're intersecting at that point. So that means that the f of x function, its value should equal the g of x function's value. f of x then is equal to 3x. And the g of x is equal to 2. So if I solve this for x, meaning it's only going to be 2 thirds, or aka 0 0.66666 repeating, 0 0.67, right, I'll round it, then I know the x value here. And doesn't that kind of look, if you really zoom in a little bit, doesn't that look like 2 thirds of a box? Yeah, that's the x value. Now, how do I find the y? Well, it turns out to be just as simple. You can take either one of these functions, I don't care which one, right? And you can plug in 0.67. Now, guess what? Watch what's going to happen. I plug it into here, right? So f of x, remember that's just f of x is equal to 3x, all right? And remember, I can just call this y. So y is equal to 3x. And instead of writing x, I'm going to plug in the x value. Now, remember, that's 2 thirds. I'm going to plug in the exact value, and wait a minute, the threes cancel, and you're telling me that the y value there is 2? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? The coordinates of this point now is going to be 0 0.67 comma 2. So the y value here is equal to 2. So what's the height? The height is equal to 2. Great. You might say, man, that might have been complicated, but wait, Andrew, wait, wait, wait. is there a relationship between, wait a minute, this said it was equal to 2, and this was equal to 2. So could I have just just said it was equal to 2 at the start? Yes, you could have, right? Because I went the long scenic way, right? But I'm going to show you now the shortcut, just in case it doesn't work out like this. Imagine your parallelogram here is shifted upwards a little bit. It's not going to be as nice anymore, okay? It's not going to be that value. 
Since this is lying on the x-axis, that's why it's going to work out nicely. But I try to give you tools to use in case the problems change. But for this problem, you could have literally just looked at this. This is saying y is equal to 2. So I know that this coordinate here must have been 2, right, for the red line. And since the y value there is 2 and this is 0, then I know the length of this height is 2. All right, so we could have shortcutted that. But in any case, I'm going to plug in my 2. And now simply all I need to do is calculate. So area will be equal to... You know, you can give exact values here if you want. It doesn't, it doesn't really, uh, you know, it doesn't really uh, matter. But I'm going to take that and multiply it by 2, the exact value. So we're going to get about 11 and a third, or 11.3, repeating whatever you want to call it. And that's the area. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hopefully this helped. And if it did, help us out. Subscribe, like, tell your friends. Take care.